Hi, I'm Mark Sowers, and I love physiology. Now, today's question is, why do we have ribs? And of course, you've heard the answer to this many times. The ribs are there to protect the lungs and protect the heart from damage from the outside, right? I mean, you look on the internet. Why do we have ribs? That's what it tells you. It's for protection. You look in medical textbooks. It says, why do we have ribs? For protection. Ask your doctor, why do we have ribs? For protection. Guess what? That's not why we have ribs. Now, I know that's a pretty bold statement to make, so I'm going to back this up here, all right? Now, some bones of the body really are for protection. Now, think about the skull bones. They're solid all the way through. It's a solid sheet of bone. It really does offer protection. But think about the ribs. The ribs aren't like that. The ribs aren't solid. They're space. You have rib, then space, then rib, then space. And in fact, the spaces are actually a little bit bigger than the ribs themselves. So you have these gaps. And with all these gaps in there, that's not protection. So think about it this way. Imagine you're going to the airport and you have, you know, the security line before you get on the airplane. So imagine if half the people had to go through the security line and half the people didn't have to go through the security line. Now, would you feel protected in that case? No, probably not. Now, maybe there's a little bit of protection, but not a lot. You wouldn't say that this is a great system for protecting me if it only covers half the people going on the airplane, right? It's not protection. And to make my point, let me ask the question in a slightly different way. All right, I want you to use your imagination. Imagine you're sitting here watching the video. You're in a safe room, in a safe space. Everything's calm and quiet around you. You're watching this video and all of a sudden, use your imagination now, all of a sudden your ribs disappear, completely vanish. Now, not the, not the skin and not the fascia and all, not all the other stuff along the wall of the chest cavity, just the ribs themselves, the bone, the hard part, okay, of the bone disappears. Imagine if that goes away. Here's the question. How long would you be able to survive? Well, if ribs are for protection, then, you know, as long as you're still sitting here and, you know, you're in a safe space and nothing's hurting you and nothing's going to get you. And as long as you, you don't do anything to, you know, puncture yourself or hurt yourself or punch yourself in the chest or anything, you're going to be fine, right? You can sit there for hours, days even. You can walk around as long as you, you know, be safe or maybe wear something around you to offer a little bit of protection. You'll be safe. You'll be fine. You can last a long time, right? If ribs are for protection, that would be the case. But here's the real answer. If you're just sitting there watching this video in a nice safe space, everything's calm around you, and all of a sudden your ribs disappear, you would survive for about two to three minutes. And that's it. Two to three minutes. Why? Well, the reason is because you would end up suffocating to death you wouldn't be able to get any air into your lungs. You would suffocate. And to see why that would happen, you have to understand a little bit about how the lungs work. So the reason we have lungs is because we need it for gas exchange. We need to bring oxygen from the outside into our body so that we can burn it and make energy. And we can expel the remnants of that burning, that carbon dioxide, and get it out of our body. That's why we breathe, to breathe in oxygen and to breathe out carbon dioxide. But how does breathing work? Well, there are several muscles involved, but the major muscle, let's talk about just the major one for right now, is the diaphragm. Now, the diaphragm is this giant sort of parachute-shaped muscle that separates the thoracic cavity, where your lungs and heart are, from the abdominal cavity, where your stomach and spleen and liver and everything else is. And the diaphragm moves up and down, and that's what draws air into your lungs and lets air go out of your lungs. So let me show you a little bit more about how this works. I've got a cool little model here, okay? I've got a little plastic jar. It's got a, a pipe with an opening at the end. It leads into these two balloons, okay? They're the lungs. And then I've got this yellow membrane here. That's going to be our diaphragm. And what's going to happen is as I expand and contract the diaphragm, move it up and down, you're going to see the lungs expand and contract. You're going to see the air going in and out. So what's happening here? So the normal diaphragm position is in the up position where the lungs are, in this case, deflated. 
But when you contract your diaphragm muscles, you pull down on the diaphragm, and that's going to make the space inside this chamber larger. It's going to lower the pressure inside because the space is bigger, same amount of air, it's going to lower the pressure. All right, so you're basically creating a vacuum. You're creating a low pressure area inside, high pressure area outside. You're creating a vacuum of sorts, and that's going to push the air in through the trachea and into the lungs. That's what fills the lungs. And then as you relax your diaphragm, it moves back up and the air flows back out through the trachea. So it's the expanding and contracting of the volume of the thoracic cavity where your lungs are that makes the air go in and out of the lungs themselves. Now understand that this is just a model. There's actually a lot of space here between, you know, the shell of this cup and the lungs inside, the balloons inside. In your chest cavity, there's no space. The lungs fill this entire chamber. This whole area is full of lungs and yeah, your heart and a couple other things. But any extra space is completely full of lungs. So as the diaphragm moves, the entire lungs that fills this entire chamber is going to expand and contract, pumping air in and out of those lungs. But the key point here is that you're creating a vacuum. When you pull down on the diaphragm, you're creating a vacuum which brings air in through the trachea and into those lungs to inflate it to equalize that pressure. That's how the lungs work. So what happens if this hard shell were soft? Well, what would happen is every time you pull down on the diaphragm, you're going to create that vacuum, and the vacuum is not necessarily going to bring air in through the trachea. It's going to suck in those walls. The walls of this thoracic cavity are going to collapse because of the vacuum that's being created in here. So they're going to equalize the pressure this way. And then as the diaphragm relaxes, the walls are going to go out, and it's going to go in, and it's going to go out. Okay, so the walls are what's going to be doing the expanding and contracting not the air going inside the lungs. So your lungs are never going to inflate because, because the walls are collapsing, there would never be a difference in pressure between the inside and the outside of the lungs that's gonna bring the air in and push it back out. So having this thoracic cavity, this shell, be hard, be rigid, that's very important. So when you think about it that way, it becomes pretty obvious what the ribs are actually for. The ribs are structural. They hold the chest wall out. They keep it from collapsing. Think of it this way. Here's a picture of a building being built and the structural members are in place that's gonna hold the roof up. And it kinda of looks like ribs. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. What are these steel beams doing in this picture? Are they offering protection, waiting for an airplane or something to crash on it? Nah, what they're doing is they're holding up the roof. They're holding the roof in place, and it's the roof, it's that skin layer that offers the protection from rain and wind and things like that. Okay, so your skin, just like everywhere else in the body, offers protection. That really does offer protection. But the ribs are structural. They hold the skin, they hold that chest wall in place, and they keep it from collapsing. So that when you create a vacuum inside, when you lower the pressure inside, it keeps that skin from collapsing in on itself and causing the only way to equalize that pressure is to bring air in through your trachea and into your lungs. Now, yes, the existence of ribs does have an added benefit, a small added benefit of a little bit additional protection, but that's not the reason they're there. They're structural. They hold the chest wall in place and keep it from collapsing. And without them, we wouldn't be able to breathe.